that has been witness to many great sporting achievements down the years. The town's heroes have paraded up High Street to the echo of the slitter pounding on the come on as the county saluted its hurling winners most recently in 1983. Trying to get through, and a shot. Ah! Since Ger Fennelly lifted the McCarty Cup, a new rival has emerged on the horizon to challenge Nolan Park and the GAA for control of the sporting hearts and minds. In Emmett Street and Fatima Place, a soccer club had started with the unique name of EMFA, a club born in the mid-60s from the emergence of televised soccer. Founder member Jim Rattigan remembers those humble beginnings. This is where it all started, uh, Stephen, uh, the winding, sloping pitch of uh, Fatima Place. Uh, the year 66, World Cup fever, Jack Charlton in England had his dog on soccer mat. Uh, after schooling to Kenny CBS, 20 or 30 of us would come up here, dash here as quickly as we could. We were unfortunately maybe more interested in football than in study. But we played here for hours and then um, when it was dark, we'd play along here under the lights, so we were probably uh, unique in that we were playing floodlit football maybe before our time. Uh, we started as a youth team. Our first manager was Tony Butler, who is now commercial manager of the Football Association of Ireland. Uh, from there, in 1970, we started our first junior side, won a trophy at our very first attempt. Uh, went on the early 70s were lean years, but we persisted. Late 70s, early 80s, we won practically everything possible in the Kenny Industry League. On to 84, where we won the league, shield and cup at junior level without losing a single game. Just before that, we had uh, applied or decided to apply for senior football, and I think that year justified our decision. Tom Walsh, clear. There's a wonderful irony that connects Kilkenny's hurling past with the emergence of soccer in the town, Frank and that's Walsh, the great goalkeeper, Ollie Welsh. Sends it to Larry Gain. Oh, what a save by Ollie Walsh. Kilkenny City's last line of defence in the 50s, 60s and 70s has two sons in the Kilkenny City soccer squad now, Ollie Jr and Billy. They still live on Fatima Place, the very road where Empha began back in 1966. Empha became Kilkenny City at the start of this season, the club having emerged from its junior roots to be one of the best run teams in the League of Ireland. Jim Rattigan, now general manager, has developed a network of support from the local business community, which is the envy of many other clubs. But why did Empha make the switch from junior football into the League of Ireland? 1984 arrived, it was probably the best year uh, we ever had in Kilkenny. We won the League, Shield and the McCallum Cup without losing a single game. So I think the writing was on the wall. We could only go one way after that unless we made a decision. Uh, if we stayed in Kilkenny and uh, we had some terrific times in Kilkenny, we could only go backwards because we needed the players needed new challenges. So the League of Ireland First Division uh, was mooted, agreed on. We applied and got in. The early years, as you know, uh, weren't that successful. Uh, for the four years, we finished at the bottom of the pile. One year, we near we finished ninth. We nearly sneaked out of the re-election. But um, last year, when we finally uh, had to apply for re-election, we said we'd better have a look at the overall situation. And we agreed that right, something had to be done. So the restructuring plan began, and I think uh, is now paying dividends. <laughs> We sat down on it and we agreed unanimously that Empha was a bit parochial. If for, for a lot of people, it was sad to see it going and, uh, you know, to see the name dying, as it were. But I don't, I don't think uh, that it will die as such. There were some great times in the Kilkenny League as Empha. Um, but, I mean, we had to see reason. Uh, Kilkenny City, everybody wanted to identify with it. We unanimously agreed to make the change, change to the black and amber colours stick with the sponsor that we had all the time who was terrific in the bad times stayed with us that's uh, tom cantrell of tc tires and uh, we've been motoring ever since of course the fairy godmother and his assistant came at the beginning of the season in the shape of eamon greg and his assistant morris price and i don't need to tell you the terrific job they have done 
Even the rain won't stop the fans from supporting Kilkenny City now, and for the young, there's free entry to Buckley Park. The changes made by Eamon Gregg have certainly had the desired result. From the last four seasons with the club, um, there's been uh, only one player or two players retained from the previous squads. So virtually it's a whole new team that's been put together from, from the beginning of the season. But I think anybody that starts up a new side, uh, you're hoping to get a nice blend. And obviously um, we, we worked very hard about Morris Price and myself. And uh, we were a little bit lucky, I think, that things knitted very, very well quickly. And uh, it was a bonus for myself and Morris, really. But I think throughout the whole League Cup campaign, it was a tremendous um, foundation for the club and for the players. Um, when we had to play the likes of Limerick and Cork, and uh, that game was a good funny because we'd done well against them. We'd done well against Waterford and Cove. And uh, it was a great experience to go to the Brandywell. And I thought we were beat 4 1. I thought the lads put up a great performance. The foundation was laid from, from the League Cup. And, um, whereas we lost our first two league games after the run for them. Um, the lads pulled themselves together and they've done themselves good for the thing. 4 0 it remains. Billy Walsh sending best away and Walsh has continued his run if best could pick him out and he can and that's a goal a consolation for Kilkenny there have been just three defeats in 17 league games since then and by last month Kilkenny City had risen to the top to the delight of their management team consecutive wins away to Bray Wanderers and home farm last month brought national prominence and it was Conor Best 13th goal of the year, which made victory certain in Talca Park. So how does Eamon Gregg approach the last four games of the season with promotion so close? Well, obviously, I think we've just got to approach it now as one game at a time. Um, I think if, if you try anything different at this stage of the season, it could all go wrong. Um, so hopefully we're just going to take one game at a time. And uh, if, we, if, we get, if we win the next four games, we get promotion. It's as simple as that, really. If we don't, well, we've had a good season so far, so it'll be no great disappointment if we don't kind of get promotion. We haven't put the players under any pressure so far this season, so we're not going to start at this stage. What about the fans here in Kilkenny? Uh, Jim Raskin has been telling me how wonderful they are. Have they really made a big difference to the side? They've been absolutely superb, I think. From, from the word go, um, when we considered the spectators that was coming to the ground over the last few seasons, and uh, from the League Cup campaign, they've really got behind us, and particularly, I'd say, the last two or three months, they've really, and they've really supported the side really well, both home and away and um, they've done us proud, really. The players have done well too, and Conor Best was voted the Soccer Writers Player of the Month for January. Last Sunday, Monaghan United offered stout resistance to Kilkenny, and even went closest to scoring in the first half. But the longer the game went on, the more City dominated, as their superior fitness and technique overcame the conditions. That attempt by Ian Woods was disallowed for offside, but Kilkenny won a penalty kick when Ollie Walsh was pushed by Bernie Savage. The Monaghan United players were incensed with the decision, but their frustration was short-lived when Conor Best failed to beat Damien McCurry in the Monaghan goal. Mark Megan's dangerous follow-up tackle on the keeper brought tempers to the surface, but things quickly cooled down and the Kilkenny player was rightly booked for that challenge. The only goal of the match was a beauty. Alan Birch found Conor Best. He got the support inside from Paul Campbell arriving from fullback. And his shot was too good for the unlucky McCurry, possibly Monaghan's best player on the day. That gave Kilkenny their eighth victory in nine matches to keep them at the top of Division One and optimistic about Premier football in Buckley Park next September. Regardless, as you say, of whether we're promoted or whether we finish at the uh, top of the league or whatever, uh, on this side of the ground here, we call it a Tinney Park side. Uh, we have plans for a 1,000-seater stand. Uh, behind the um, city goal, we have plans for terracing. There's a a hill we'll call it there at present where the cop usually congregate and it's a bit of a favorite spot so we'll terrace that and we hope to cover it as well there are other plans like we have we we style ourselves on being a family club you'll notice uh, in the ground um today that uh, a lot of mothers fathers and children are here particularly children lots and lots of children so we would like to have facilities for all of those people in the future not just for the fathers to watch football for the children to play for the mothers to relax, watch television or whatever.
And if those plans Jim Rattigan was outlining there come to fruition, then Buckley Park could become one of the best appointed grounds in the league. And in case you're wondering where we got those comic strip pictures in that report from Kilkenny, they're from the pen of Eugene Clark, a local man with a great artistic talent, I'm sure you'll agree.